Okay, what's going on with this crazy sound? Whoa, whoa, I'm just like spitting. Okay, what was going on with this crazy sound? Let's take a look. Um, you know, so often I don't really change a whole lot of adjustments between sounds. I just like start going, and then I find a sound that's like, okay, this is it. But uh, a lot of these will share settings from previous sounds. For example, in oscillator one, we have a triangle wave, and it's at 16 feet. There's no portamento. Um, in oscillator two, I have it set to the ring modulator, and I have pitched it up some, so the ring modulator is making a, a unique sound. Both oscillators were roughly around seven. I did have frequency modulation happening in, let's see, um, I have frequency modulation happening, but uh, although this is the EG1, I have it set to external because something's happening over here. Basically, what I did, holy cow, what did I do here? Okay, so I have the pink noise output going into the input of the VCA. It's being controlled by the wheel, and then the output of the VCA is going up and into the frequency, which is to say right here we have this set so that the pink noise is going to be affecting the frequency depending on what we have the wheel set to. And as you probably saw, when I started playing with the wheel, crazy stuff started happening with the frequency. And that's what it was. We were using pink noise to control the frequency of the sound, uh, which makes a really messy, distorted thing that you heard. Okay, so that's why this is up. Uh, the high pass filter, we had around 3.6 with a high peak or resonance. And why are we doing that? Uh, the high pass filter, when you have it in a low cutoff point and uh, the peak or resonance high, you're amplifying bass frequencies. And I wanted to have sort of an amplified bass frequency here. So that's the cool thing about the high pass. You think about the high pass and it's just like cutting out all the low. But because the peak or resonance uh, amplifies harmonics at the cutoff point, if the cutoff point is low in the high pass uh, filter, you're actually boosting the low frequencies with the resonance. So that's what I was doing here. And then the low pass filter, I had relatively open, no peak at all. I didn't want the resonance sound, I just wanted the low pass filter sound. And then we had EG2 jacked up and, uh, well actually it says EG2 external and we had it set for external. And the external we had it set for was coming out of envelope generator one. Envelope generator one's output was going into the cutoff frequency, the low pass filter, and the, to this amount, which was about 7.5. And then we had the envelope generator one set to about one in the attack time and about three in the release time. And that gave it its definitive sound. Now the last thing I did, which was total insanity, um, was, I don't even know, I just, I just did this and this is what happened. I took the white noise, put it into the signal in of the ESP. Now usually the external signal processors for things that you are, are not in the synthesizer that you want to put through the synthesizer, but you can put things from the synthesizer through it too, which you've seen. So I took the white noise and put it into the signal in. Um, it's set pretty high, 6.5, which is causing the, geez, which is causing the peak light to go off. And then I took the output, I shaped the white noise so that I shaved out some of the frequencies with what amounts to is the bound pass filter. We have a low cut frequency and a high cut frequency and by manipulating the two of those we have a band pass filter. And I made it sort of a band pass set of noise. And then I took the output from that and put it into the external signal in. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, we should have been hearing noise the whole time, but because of the way that the band pass was working, I could carve out all the frequencies that were audible, and you heard me there at the end sort of bring them in, and then all of a sudden there was kind of a band pass -y noise sound that was accompanying what I was playing. And that's what that was about, and that's this sound. <laughs>
Okay, let's pretend that's the end. What this sound basically is, is first of all, I started off with the oscillator on a square wave, and it's not quite completely square, as you can see from the pulse whip. It's somewhere between square and whatever percentage this is. Let's say 50, well, this is 50, so 75, I don't know, we're guessing. It's just uh, purely speculative here, uh, since it's not marked. And it's at 32 feet. Uh, there's a slight amount of portamento here. Um, VCO level is up at about 8. Um, the high pass filter is about at 4. We have a peak area of about 6.5. Down here, EG2 is affecting the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. In the, the bassy range, how it kind of dips down in the bassy range. Can you hear that? Probably. Okay, so, and then our high pass filter is at about 6. We're not letting all the high frequencies through. We're cutting off some of them. There's no resonance, no peak. And again, we have EG2 affecting the uh, filter cutoff at about 8. We don't really have any modulation going here. Envelope generator 1 is not used. Uh, envelope generator 2 is about 1 on the attack, 4 on decay. Uh, 5.5 .5 on the sustain, and the release time is about 1. It's not a huge release time. And then about some portion through it, you heard me start to turn up uh, oscillator 2, which was set to the ring modulator. When you have it set to ring modulator, and the pitch of oscillator 2 is at 0, it just kind of adds this sort of vaguely pulse with modulation the sound. We're at an octave of 4 as compared to 32 in oscillator 1. And I just thought it was really nice to have a couple of octaves, a sound that was a couple of octaves up over the top of this bass. And that's basically the sound. As you can see there's really no um, patching the tip waves. So uh, again that's a sound that just happens with us using the normal functions. Okay, we have kind of an interesting sound here. Um, what I did is oscillator 1 is set to triangle wave, and it's again at 32 feet. And uh, oscillator 2 is set to sawtooth wave. It's slightly detuned. It is the fifth above, uh, well actually it's an octave and a fifth, above oscillator 1. So we actually have two frequencies going on there. It's not in unison. And we don't have any frequency modulation going on. But uh, we do have um, envelope generator 2 affecting the filter cutoff in the high pass. The high pass is set to 4. Uh, the peak is again set to 7, which is right on the verge of self-oscillation. 
The low pass filter is set to about 7.3 and uh, the peak is set to about 8 so it's right on the verge of self oscillation as well. It is also about the same amount affected by EG2 so the envelope generator is affecting the filter cutoff point. Uh, we again did not use envelope generator 1. Envelope generator 2 has an attack time of 0, decay time of 6, uh, sustain level of about 6, and a release time of 2. And uh, that's all very well and good. But here's what happened over here in the um, patch section. What I've done is I've taken the output of the MS-20 out of the, the headphones jack and I put that into the ESP in signal in. And then I have taken the result out of the ESP, uh, out of the audio output, which has a bandpass filter, and I have set the low cut frequency at about two, the high cut frequency at about eight. And that has resulted in a, uh, a version of the headphone output that uh, is affected by those knobs. And I put that into our second VCA. And why have I done that? If you watch the other videos, you'd know, uh, so that I can use the wheel to control the amount of the effect that that's going to be. Because, uh, actually it's not going to be effect, to control the amount of that sound. But it will become an effect because the external signal in, which is where we're going to patch it, goes again through the filters. So, I have taken the output from the ESP. Okay, let's, let's chart this perfectly. Uh, headphones out, into the signal in of the ESP, out of the ESP, and into the VCA. The VCA is being controlled by the voltage from the wheel, and then the output from that is going into the external signal in, which means it's going through the filters again, and then again. And so what we're talking about there is kind of the, uh, what has started off as the Minimoog effect, where you take the output of the Minimoog and put it in through the external input, uh, but now has been embraced also by the Archuria Mini Brute and uh, the Moog Sub Fatty. So what I've basically done, and I did this in the original MS-20 video I did, uh, especially in the theme, and I don't know if I did it in the demonstration itself, but certainly in the theme, I had the headphone out going into, back into the synthesizer and it makes a really interesting distorted noise. Now the, the thing that you saw uh, me do when I'm playing with a wheel, that totally bizarre sound, well that was the outcome of the output of the synthesizer being put again through the filters and again, and there's sort of a feedback effect that's taking place, and that's why the pitch is going all crazy and why certain frequencies are amplified and why sometimes it goes into self-oscillation and comes out of self-oscillation into some sort of weird pitch change. Crazy stuff happens when you take the output from the uh, headphones. So that's why I did that. I wanted to show you. The sound itself is a relatively, it's slightly distorted because of what I was doing with the high pass filter. But uh, the real crazy stuff starts happening when you take the headphone out.